Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. So what do you think of my latest impulse purchase? Yep, I bought these on impulse. Even though I've been doing a lot of research into starfish, I wasn't quite ready to buy them yet, or so I thought. I was at the local fish store buying frozen food, kind of perused over the coral tanks and spotted these guys. So after doing some inquiries and talking with the fish shop owner about what they needed and whether I could probably manage them, I brought them home. So what specifically did I get? This is Fromia monilis, the tile starfish. And this is Fromia indisa, the marble starfish. I thought I'd put together this video because starfish are one of those things that everybody wants and they admire them and a lot of us just try them without really knowing what they need. The biggest thing that kills starfish in captivity initially is improper acclimation. Starfish are very, very sensitive to changes in their environment, even really slight changes in salinity and oxygen level, and they require long-term acclimation. Some are recommended to acclimate over days. Fromia are one of the hardier families of starfish, and so they do tend to survive a little bit longer in home aquariums. I'm really hoping I can do things right and try and get these guys through and keep them over the longer term. I decided to do this acclimation uh, part of the video because acclimation is a little tricky and I'm acclimating them in my sump to maintain temperature. Because they're in my sump, the operating water level has changed and it's gone up. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on that and replace salt water as it gets taken out of the display tank and put into these bags, but more on that later. Doing my research over lunch at Burger King after I had bought the starfish, I learned that they're very tricky to acclimate because they're extremely sensitive to even minute changes in their environment. And the idea is <clears throat> to take your time and do it over a long period, as long as possible. And that's why I'm doing this in my sump because of course the problem with a long-term acclimation is maintaining temperature. I did this with both bags and I'm just using this one as an example to show you. I opened up the bag and I turned over the top edge as many times as possible to kind of make the top edge a little more firm so I could clip it to the side of the sump and hopefully the top of the bag would stay open to maintain access to oxygen. And I've used these dollar store clips to just hold the bag open against the side of the sump. The acclimation dripper is in there, it is dripping at a fairly steady rate, and now it's just time to watch and wait. And now they're both set up. I have the other end of the acclimator hoses in the display tank, and so the water's being removed from there and being dripped into these bags. And as the water rises in the bags, I'll remove some and over and over again. My plan here is to do this for four hours at a minimum, hopefully more. Now, of course, the water is being removed from the display, put into these bags, and even with displacement, the water is going to go down in the return chamber. So I'll have to keep an eye on that and top up the salt water when necessary uh, by pumping it up from the basement. So it's gonna be a matter of hanging around and just making sure everything goes well and I don't have any disasters. But I don't anticipate any problems. I just need to be attentive to it. So over the course of the next four hours, I was really intrigued to see how much these guys moved around. They were constantly climbing up the walls of the bags up to the water level. Really encouraging to see that. Kenny always has to come and see what I'm doing. Kenny. He knows better. I ended up doing the acclimation for nearly five hours because I wanted to wait until the lights in the tank got a little bit more dim. So we're finally at that point. And what I did was cut off a lot of the top of the bag. I'm not too worried about getting a little bit of the store water into my aquarium. And I read that these things should never be exposed to air when handling. So in order to avoid that, I've decided to get as much water as possible out of the bag, then lower the bag under the water and pull the starfish out. And here's the other one. And here we go. We're ready to put them in the tank. This is the big guy. And you can see I've got the bag right under the water. I'm just going to gently pull them out. I'm putting one in each front corner. 
You can see the lights are quite blue. My hope is that it's slightly darker and perhaps the fish won't harass them if they uh, don't notice them quite so much. The tile starfish started moving right away and here he is crawling up the rocks already. So this is really encouraging to see. The marble starfish similarly has moved about six inches away and he's got one foot up on the glass. Over the next day or so, they did a lot of moving around the tank and I was delighted to see that they really were active in here. I even had a chance to witness a starfish speed bump. This turbo snail was crawling right over top of the starfish and I was a little worried that he might actually be starting to chew on it, but he wasn't. He just crawled over the leg of the starfish and carried on his way. On day three, I saw this and I wondered whether they were about to do battle. I had read that they would tolerate others of their own species as long as the tank was big enough. Now these aren't the same subspecies and my hope is that they are not going to start fighting with each other. Since they were almost touching, I figured I'd set up a time lapse and watch what they did next. They spent 24 hours like this, so I think they're friends. At one point I thought, oh look how cute it is, the little starfish has white toes, but actually that's necrosis and not a good thing, so I kept a very close eye on it. After a couple of weeks it started to recede. I also read it was a good idea to spot feed your starfish, so here's my attempt at spot feeding some of the LPS Grow Color food. Because of the position of the tile starfish on the glass, there is a nice little spot where I was able to put some of the LPS pellets. And um, here's what I tried to do. It wasn't very successful because eventually they all got uh, blown away by the water or um, stolen by a fish or even worse, snatched away by a shrimp. So I don't think any of the pellets actually ever made it down to where the stomach is. My strawberry conch Rockefeller came across the starfish on his travels one morning and um, they just kind of hung out together for a little while. After getting safely through the first two weeks, by week three I'm starting to notice things like the little tiny feeding tentacles that come out of the starfish legs and I was really glad to be able to get this footage because of where he was on the glass. So when you compare it back to the early days when the sections underneath his legs were tightly closed, now they're wide open and I'm really hoping this is a sign that he's feeding well. The white spots on the end of his legs have really, really diminished. They're still there, but they're not as extensive as they first were. Into week four, I noticed that the starfish was on its back and was really happy to see that by the time I got this time lapse set up, he was flipping himself over and started to crawl up the glass. And from what I've read, this is a very good sign. An unhealthy starfish is unable to flip himself back over. So maybe we're gonna be okay. As I record this, I have now had the starfish in my tank for 30 days. And I'm crossing my fingers, of course. I'm not gonna assume anything but I'm really hoping that the first 30 days is an indication that they're going to be okay. I think maybe my tank is just the right amount and the right kind of dirty <laughs> for them to find food because they feed on minute things that we try and clean out of our aquariums. And in fact, very little is actually known about their diet. And many times it's assumed that they die of starvation. I have a young tank and I don't vacuum my sand, maybe I'll get lucky and these guys will have a food source that will sustain them over the longer term. I'm still going to watch them carefully and a lot of the reason for that is because they're beautiful and interesting. Thanks so much for watching, I really do appreciate it.